First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Next double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akium. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or forbear. And today, I'm going to do a quick lesson on the parable of Lazarus. Okay, it's a, uh, it's a beautiful story, beautiful parable that represents the, uh, the current state of this world. Okay, and um, it's going to be coming out of the book of St. Luke. And we're going to be right here at chapter 16. And I'm going to go ahead and get started at verse 19. So here we are, verse 19, and it reads, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. So this rich man, he had a fairly easy life. Okay. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. So the rich man represents Esau, Edom. Okay. Because this is his kingdom. He has the, the fatness of the earth. He has the blessings. You know, he's in his kingdom right now. So he, you know, for the most part, their life is simple. It's easy. You know, they don't have, they don't have to worry about the same thing as that that uh, the rest of the world worries about. And then there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. That beggar represents uh, Israel, represents Jacob, okay? The poor man of the earth, that's under the curses, subject to payments, right? Pretty much has nothing, has, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's Israel. It says that there's a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores and those sores represent the wounds because the nation of israel which consists of you so-called negroes latinos native american indians has been wounded by by the world um, particularly uh esau edom but also by the other nations and it says that and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table so you know uh, the crumbs represent just the the basics the basics of life you know um and really, you know, Esau Edom barely even gives us the basics of life. You know, he has the, he's been blessed with the with the fatness of the earth. You know, he has all the riches of the earth. And, and Esau Edom does his very best to make sure that we are that we remain in poverty, you know, always in constant want and need. And once again, this is all part of the curses. So that's what those crumbs represent, because, you know, they're they're eating a full meal at their table, you know, and and, and uh, Lazarus which represents the Israelites is just, you know, even if, even if we do quote unquote receive riches on this side, it's still crumbs compared to what Esau Edom really has. Okay. So it says, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And once again, those sores represent the wounds. Our people have been wounded throughout history by the hands of Esau Edom. And that's recorded very much within the Bible and in secular history. So that's what those, that's what those, uh, those sores represent and the dogs represent the other nations and actually to prove this we can go and go ahead to uh, matthew saint matthew chapter 15 the lawyer Hawashai, he calls the other nations dogs so we're here at matthew 15 verse 22 and it says and behold a woman of canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying have mercy on me o lord thou son of david my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil but he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. So they said, they said, you know, push her away. That tells you right there uh, <clears throat> that, that, you know, that your Lord Yahweh is really, he really came for the nation of Israel. He's going he's gonna to tell you that in the next few verses. It says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. So who, who are the children? The children are the children of Israel. Okay. The Lord's chosen nation, which once again consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Okay. So the Lord, Yahweh, he came, you know, he came and, uh, to bring blessings and good tidings to the children of Israel, the oppressed, the poor of this world. Okay. But as you see. He called at verse 26. It says, it's not, it is not meat to take the children's bread, 
which means the blessings, and to cast it to dogs. So the dogs represent the other nations. Okay, so now we're going to go back. Okay, here we are. Back at verse 21 in uh, the book of St. Luke, chapter 16. So it says, he says, Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. So the other nations, they, they play a part in the destruction and the wounds of Israel. Okay, that's the reason why the Lord said he's coming to judge the nations. Zephaniah 3 and 8, he's going to gather the nations to pour out his fury and righteous anger. Okay, and then we keep on reading down verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried away. He was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And the rich man cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in his in this flame. So here, you know, we see that on the other side, okay, once again, hell is a, a condition played out on earth, and it's going to be the lake of fire. And we know that all uh, Edomites are condemned to the lake of fire. There's no repentance for Esau. That's in uh, it's in the book of Hebrews. So Lachia, I, I don't know the exact uh, chapter and verse off the top of my head, but I know that. It tells you this in the book of Hebrews that um, even though he sought out, he sought out forgiveness with tears. Therefore, there was no place of repentance for Esau. So, you know, all Edomites are going to end up in the lake of fire, which is going to be their kingdom, America, Babylon, the great when those nuclear missiles hit. So in this parable, uh, the rich man, he, um, he he's in that fire. He's tormented by the fire. And now he, he sees, you know, he's, he's calling up to calling to the heavens trying to uh get lazarus to give him some relief from all the pain and torment that he's gone through right that, that's what he's that's what he's saying here verse 24 and he cried and said father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame but abraham said son remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things so esau He's receiving the best, the best of the best on this side. This is his kingdom. He's got the wealth, right? He's got all the things of the world, okay? So, you know, and it says, and likewise, Lazarus, evil things. So the children of Israel, we suffer and we, we receive the worst, you know, the worst of the world. You know, we are a curse and a reproach to most of the nations of the world. You know, they rise up against us and, uh, you know, they pretty much try to try to uh, try to oppress us, and they don't try. They they succeed in that. Okay, so that's what that's what this represents here. So pretty much he's saying to him, "Look, you already had your good. You already had your good, right? You already had, you already had uh, your um, you already had your uh, Salakia. I'm drawing a blank, but you you already you already had your kingdom. You already had your kingdom. Now." Now, Lazarus, who has been received evil his whole life, you know, he, it says, well, actually, matter of fact, just read it, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. So, Lazarus received evil all of his life, right? And and the wicked, which is Esau, Edom, they received good all their life. You know what I'm saying? They live in the best neighborhoods. You know, they drive the best cars. They had the best women. Right? All the women of the, all the, women of the world chase after the so, uh, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Right. So it says, uh, <clears throat> and beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So that's that great wall is the wall of repentance. Once again, you know, Esau Edom is not granted repentance. That's a court. That's in the book of Hebrews. You know, even they even they they, they seek it. They're going to seek it tearfully. You know, it's not that that uh, repentance is not going to be granted unto them. It says, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. OK, so that's pretty much the end of the parable, though. Um, you know, that's pretty much the end of the parable. Essentially, that that's the relationship between uh, Jacob and Esau right there. 
and uh, the Lord uses this parable. He uses this parable <clears throat> to, uh, you know, to show that 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 relationship, and and how the rich man has he has everything in this world, so in the next world he's going to be in torment, and then Lazarus says that, you know, he he received nothing but evil things, so so then in the new world, he's going to be comforted. Okay, so and and I'm gonna I just want to get one more scripture. Um, this is a book out of the Apocrypha, Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 11, verse 9. Okay. So, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 9, it says, and this is speaking of, um, <clears throat> this is speaking of the children of Israel, who, once again, you know, we're up under the curses. We're coming out of our punishment now, but, but, um, you know, we receive mostly evil on this side. And then Esau has received good. So, so, when, when, when the times come for the first to be the last and the last to be the first, it's going to be the other way around. It says, for when they were tried, I'll bite, but in mercy, chastised. So we, we, we go through trials and tribulations, but it's all in mercy to discipline us, prepare us for the kingdom. It says, they knew how the ungodly were judged in wrath and tormented. So the ungodly, the wicked, who is Esau Edom, when they, when they get judgment, it's going to be in wrath. Because, you know, the Lord has, he has uh, held back their destruction for a very long period of time. He speaks about this in Romans chapter 9. He patiently forbeareth the vessels to, uh, to punish the vessels of wrath. I'll get that next. So it says, um, they knew how the ungodly were judged in wrath and tormented, thirsting in another manner than the just. So, so we go through, we go through hunger and thirst. You know, we are afflicted, but we're afflicted for righteousness sake. It's, uh, it's for our chastisement. That's also in the book of um, Second, uh, Second Maccabees chapter 6. I'll get that first, and then I'll go ahead and get that Roman chapter 9, and we'll close out from there. So Second Maccabees chapter 6, it says, and this is talking about the great, uh, great evil that our people have went through under the hands of Esau. It says, Now I beseech those that read this book that they not be discouraged for these calamities, but if they judge those punishments not to be for destruction before a chastening of a nation, of our nation. For it is a token of his great goodness when the wicked doers are not suffered any long time but forthwith punished. So it's that, so like I said, all the nations of the world are wicked, including the nation of Israel. Okay. You know, we have the two thirds that are going to be destroyed with Esau on this side. All right, but all the nations of the world are wicked, but the Lord you know, there's a scripture that says, uh, book, I don't believe, uh, there's a scripture that says in the book of Psalms, chapter 130, I believe. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find that. It says that he, that he doesn't count all of our iniquities. Let's see. Because if he did, who would stand? Okay. It says, um, let's see. Yep, Psalm chapter 130, verse 3. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Okay, but it, that, that verse 3. If, the, if thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? So every nation has been wicked upon the face of the earth, but the Lord has chosen to have mercy on the nation of Israel, and he's going to give, he's given us a second chance, okay, because, you know, to honor the covenant that he's made with our forefathers. So it says, for the token of his great goodness, when wicked doers are not suffered in a long time, but forthwith punished, it's actually mercy. For not as with other nations, whom the Lord patiently forbeareth to punish, as Esau and the dogs of the world, which are the other nations, till they be come to the fullness of their sins, so doeth he with us okay so he doesn't the lord doesn't uh he doesn't he doesn't wait to punish us we're receiving our punishment now the rest of the world they're going to receive theirs you know and it's going to be for wrath and torment it says lest that being come to the height of sin afterward he should take vengeance of us you see that so he's waiting until they come to the fullness of their sins which they really have already the only reason why he hasn't brought the destruction is because according to second peter chapter 3 
Um, it tells us that um, it tells us that uh, that the Lord is not slow or slack in counting His promises, some kind of slackness, but instead He is patient with us, wanting none to perish, but all to come to repentance. So He's He's given He's given our people a chance to um, to repent and get right with the Lord, and only the elect is going to do that. Okay, it says, lest that being come to the height of sin afterwards, he should take vengeance of us. And therefore, he never withdraw his mercy from us. And though he punish with adversity, yet doth he never forsake his people. So that's that's the that's the message right there. See, so it's actually an act of mercy, even though we're, we're playing a role of Lazarus right now. Once again, remember the, the end of the end of the story. Lazarus is going to be among the heavenly father and the angels. And the prophets, and he's going to be comforted, while the rich man who represents Esau Edom is going to dwell in a lake of fire and in torment. Okay, let's go ahead and get Romans chapter nine. I'm gonna close out with this. So the book of Romans chapter nine. Let's go on down to. Let's see. Okay. It's a loaded, it's a long chapter. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, I'm going to start at, the, uh, let's see. I'm going to start at verse 11. And once again, this is, this is kind of you know, going into what I said before. The Lord is just having mercy on us because he just chose to, you know, it's not of anything. You know, our, our nation was wicked, just like the other nations. Verse 11, it says, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of, of the most high, according to election, might stand not of works, but of him that calleth. Okay, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. So the elder was Esau. He came out first, red like a hairy garment. Verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid, so there's no unrighteousness here. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I, will, whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the most high that showeth mercy. So the Lord just chose the nation of Israel. It wasn't, it wasn't because we were better than the other nations. It tells you that in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, you know, because there's wicked, a lot of wicked Israelites. It says, uh, verse 17, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Okay, and you, you know what he did to Pharaoh in the book of Exodus. You know, he destroyed uh, the ancient Egyptians by the hand of Moses, which was, the, Moses was said to be the meekest man on the earth. Okay, the poor, you know, so meek, you know, humble, right? So once again, it's, just, it's the same theme, you know, the, uh, the meek, the humble, the poor, rising up against and overcoming the rich oppressor, which was the Egyptians at that time. And now we're in modern day Egypt and the and the, uh, the Pharaoh represents Esau Edom and their elites. OK, and the Lord's going to do the same thing. He's going to rise. He's going to rise up Lazarus, which represents the nation of Israel. And they're going to be they're going to be brought to the kingdom and dwell among the heavens, dwell among uh, the heavenly fathers, only begotten son, the angels and the prophets. He says, uh, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he, mer hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he, he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against the Most High? Should the thing form to, should the thing form say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? So he's saying, you know, we, we we can't control the way the Lord made us. He he made some to be righteous and some to be wicked. It says, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that's, that's Esau Edom. They are the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. He's allowed them to do their wickedness for long periods of time, as we read in 2 Maccabees chapter 6, um, you know, until they come to the, the height of their sin, the fullness of their sin. And uh, and then he's going to he's gonna put it all down on them all at one time in wrath and in torment. It says, 
What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory? So there you go. Lord willing, this was edifying. With that being said, all praise, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, Shalom.